Good morning, my name is Bill Kern. And if I could, I'd take a few minutes to tell you why I think this church is worth supporting and uh, why I consider you all my church family. I think I'm a little bit prejudiced, uh, but I think we've got the finest facilities we've ever had. I love this church. I think we have the best programs, Awanas, and all the other programs that go along with it are wonderful. I think we have the best people anywhere. And our people volunteer and help, and it's just a wonderful thing. I think perhaps we have the finest pastor we've ever had. That's my opinion, but I think I'm allowed that. And he has a wonderful staff behind him. This church deserves our support. I'd like to go back a little bit, if I could, and kind of paint a picture of why I love this church as a building, why I love this church as a family. Liz and I moved here in 1985 with three little kids, and uh, we looked around town a little bit. Neither of us were raised as Methodists, but uh, as Pastor says, somebody invited us. And uh, not far long after that, we got here. Steve Bates had a wonderful class. Dobson was big back then and it was all a young marriage class with kids and uh, it was a great class first thing you know as pastor would say you get involved and uh, Liz would be working in the kitchen and teaching a class maybe and uh, Rose and Chris let me in the choir and first thing you know you're involved with the Methodist Church I think back over the years of the great teachers we've had, some of you will remember Miss Wright. There's a classroom with her name on it. And I remember a time when, when my wormy, squirmy three-year-old son, Stephen, would not stand still. Uh, and Miss Wright was on him like a chicken on a June bug to get him to try and sing <laughs> that song and stand still. It was funny, Liz and I laughed about it forever. I remember a choir singing special one time and Chris Day, when I looked up from the music, her eyes were full of tears. Tears were running down her cheeks. And I thought, you know, that's my kind of choir director. I think I like this church. I remember singing a special one time. The name of the song was called Hotel Hallelujah. Kind of a snappy little tune. And uh, Dean Schoengert, sitting just about where he is right here, about halfway through the song, got up and started dancing in the aisle. You remember that, Dean? I do. I do. And Marjorie, you were clapping him along, so you were, you were part of it too there. And I thought to myself, wow, this is kind of a swinging church. I, like, I think I like this church. My two teenage girls, you couldn't get them out of bed in the morning and go to, go to uh, school for loving their money, except on Tuesday mornings. Because on Tuesday mornings, Janet Sylvester would feed them breakfast. And she would fill her tummies with goodies, but she would fill their heads with what it is to be a godly woman and a mother and a wife. This church helped me raise my kids. This church will help you raise your kids too. I remember when we were rebuilding this church, Max Maynard and Carl Enemuth and I were standing at the back here, and this sanctuary was all tore up, and where I'm standing right here was completely open, and it was raining, it was pouring rain, and water's running down the walls and down the steps, and the basement's full of water. And Carl looked at Max and I and said, what have we done to our church? As only Carl could. But God had a little plan there. I think maybe it turned out pretty good. I remember walking Catherine down that aisle right there. She married a young Dutchman. I remember sitting right there. And you all helped me send Liz to be with the Lord. And you stood with me as my family would. And you loved me and you supported me and you took care of me at a terrible time of my life. You helped me bury a brother and a sister-in-law. And then you helped me welcome a brother and a sister-in-law to this congregation. You rejoiced with me when the Lord found a Vicky for me. And she walked down that aisle with her father, and she took my hand. And she said, till death do us part. Praise the Lord. 
I have a great friend in Canada. His name is Ross Chapin. Some of you know him. And Ross is a CPA, so we talk about money some, and we fish a lot, so you get to talk. And Ross said something one time that has always stuck with me. And he said, Kern, he said, you know, God does not need your money. Now, the church needs money. We have bills to pay and buildings and missionaries, all the things that the church was put on this world to do. But God does not need your money. And I've thought about that a lot. And, you know, the widow gave her last mite. And as I understand it, a mite is about a half a penny. So the money she gave to God meant nothing, really. What she did give to God was her whole heart. And that's what God wants out of this whole deal. The rich young ruler could not give his money to God. He could not turn loose of it, and therefore he could not give God his heart. And the Bible says he went away sorrowful. Through this all, God wants our heart, because if our heart is right, folks, then our time and our tithe and our efforts are all in the right place. That's what God wants. I hope and I pray that over the years you guys will feel the same as I do about this church and about you all because it's about our heart. Thank you. Amen.